Good morning. This is Annabelle Kay from Coffee Clutch. And today we have tempted back the amazing Tristan Martin to Thank talk you. to us about um, how easy it is to hack your laptop if it's not encrypted. If you've been on Tristan's webinars with us before, you will know, and I'm going to make him blush now so he can turn off his video, that Tristan is an extraordinary man. He manages to make all this tech gobbledygook stuff that makes me just want to shoot myself actually make sense. Or at least for me, as long as I'm listening to you, Tristan, it makes sense. I find I have to go back and replay the old webinars from time to time to kind of stack up my brain. And our subject today is, is really demonstrating um, what effect encryption has on your laptop. And some of the conversations I'm having, not necessarily with people in, in the groups that we both support, but generally are, well, I've got a password on my laptop. Isn't yep. that secure enough? What all, is all this stuff about encryption? So why is it that we're all in a muddle about this? What's really going on, Tristan? I think it's it's the term password. Password is like your is a, a key to the door. So your password is something you set all over the place to about gaining access. So when we did the, the webinar before, we had a bit of a discussion about what the difference between encryption and passwords are. Um, the the password because encryption does have a password your password allows you to decrypt what's done on the hard drive but you also have a password to get into your actual computer and they're two very different things so i suppose it's a bit like you have a password for your email account and you might have a password with your broadband provider and they may well be two different passwords and they give different access to different things the password wise is your is, is you're gaining entry to whatever it is to protect. Now, the password you have on Windows is about gaining access to the actual computer itself to access uh, your user's profile, okay? The data is still just all on the hard drive in ones or zeros that any Windows computer can read, which is what we're going to demonstrate today. The encryption is how it changes all the data. So all the password is, is about what it's, what that specific password is protecting. So your password on your Windows laptop or your MacBook is um, purely about gaining access into the profile. It's nothing to do with encryption. What it does is it stops it. If you stand up and nip to the toilet and there's other people in your office, they're, by the time you, they're unlikely to be able to sit down at your computer and be able to gain access to it really quickly while you actually have got to the low. Um, it doesn't stop somebody who's actually got the computer at hand from gaining access, which I'll show you, uh, if they've stolen it or they've got it overnight or they've got it for 10 minutes in essence. Yeah. So you've done a little recording, really, of you being a computer burglar, aren't you? Hacking into somebody's yep. data. Now, well, last time I ran a pre-recorded video, I want to warn you, we couldn't make the sound run simultaneously over the top of it. So okay. the video is about 10 minutes long. So yep. if our listeners can't hear any sound or whatever yep. while that's going on, will you pop into the chat room and um, give a clue? Because yeah. this really freaked me out, this video, because this is maybe not the length of time of popping to the loo, is it? No. And it's what? Ten minutes tops. It, it's it's t there's two hacks that are done in the video, and the reason I've done it as a video is purely because to try and you, you have to reboot the computer. So to have to reboot the computer, if we were doing this as a, a live stream, I couldn't do that, and it does stuff outside of normal Windows. The your data's on your hard drive. Uh, and I mean, the reason I did this as a video, I did it as a demonstration because as an ex-teacher, you get the, the comments of, well, yeah, you could hack into the computer if you stole it because you're an IT person, you know what you're doing. But no, who's going to want to look at my data? And the other one being that people think that they've seen the movies with all these lines of codes. So people have to be really technical. Again, why is someone going to go to that effort to look at the data I've got on my computer if they stole it? And what I did with this demonstration was to show that realistically, within three minutes, you can gain access to all the data on a computer if it's not encrypted. And you're not going to teach us how. You're not going to make us all super hackers this morning, are you? Well, you're it, not going to the routine, but it shows how simple it is. Because all you need is a piece of uh, a, a 
piece of software that you get with every sort of local backup software. It's completely free to download. It's completely legal as software. It's fully distributed. Uh, the one example I use is um, as a free version of uh, Macrium Reflect, which is a very good backup software, um, just to show that you can get that version completely free and you've got it on a CD. Uh, and that one will boot, but you could do it with a Linux CD, you could do it with a backup, uh, with the, it's a recovery CD. So I'll set the video off to go. Okay.
Okay, so I've hopefully I've you've seen the um the annotation I put in there uh, along the side as what was going on. So what we had to give us a bit of an overview of the video was at the very beginning, I put in the first couple of minutes, the laptop is as you would get it from PC World, from a shop, anywhere you buy it when you do a fresh install of Windows. Uh, and I hadn't set any passwords or anything there, so it's completely blank. Everything is a default install, just all up to date. I created a text file live in front of you, so you saw that the file was created. And then, so there's no encryption because you have to turn on encryption on a computer. It's not on by default. So I created that text file, which was date and timestamp, so you could see that when it was created. And then I set a password. I set the password to be Coffee Clutch. And that's the only time I typed in that password. Uh, normally, if I've done a demonstration, I have somebody else set it, so I've got no clue what it is. But as you'll see in the video, I never typed in the word Coffee Clutch ever again in there. That was the password on my laptop. As far as you could be concerned, I don't know what it is. Came out of there. I then showed you that the password, password, didn't work because that's what I was going to set it to. Then what you've got is a, a demonstration of a CD. So this CD here is sort of what I class as my, uh, it's my God disk. It allows me to get access to all that data when people, loot, if they haven't got it encrypted, when their Windows fails, when they, it just allows me to be that miracle worker for them. So um, what I do is I boot up with that CD. It's a backup recovery CD that any backup software comes with that allows you to uh, run a version of Windows which has the backup software installed so you can restore the file to the hard drive. Because if you boot up off your hard drive, you can't overwrite all the data on it. So you need to boot up off a different source of data, which CD, USB stick, external hard drive, to be able to overwrite what's on your normal hard drive. Uh, but that also CD gives a brilliant way that it allows you to do a backup and so forth. But because it allows me to read the data, it's my version of Windows where I'm the administrator. It doesn't matter about you being the administrator and anybody else who's a user on your PC because I boot from my Windows, not the one that's on the hard drive. So the shift key allows me to choose what I'm going to boot from. Do I boot in from the hard drive on the computer? Am I booting from a CD? Am I booting from a memory stick, from a network connection? Lots of options available to me. CD, nice and simple. It takes a bit longer to boot in because it's loading Windows from a CD. It loads a very cut down version of Windows. At that point, I can't read all files. So if you had Word documents, I couldn't open them. I couldn't look at them on screen. I can open a text file. But what I can do is copy them all to an external hard drive, put them on my main PC, and I can view absolutely everything. Because my main PC has Word installed, it has picture software installed, all that sort of info, all the programs I need. The cut down version of Windows can do copy, create, edit, delete. It does the basics of Windows if you have no software installed. That one had the backup software installed, so I could do a backup image of the hard drive. So um, that version of Windows is there, and because I could open up a text file which shows I could access that file even though it was in a password protected user. And at no point have I typed in the Coffee Clutch password. So uh, if you don't have a CD drive, nope, a uh, CD drive, I probably don't have it with me. Uh, I love the rummaging about, you know he's got a gizmo to do this with, don't you? 12 quid off Amazon, because lots of computers don't have CD drives. It's And I, that's why I have one with me always, because if I need to recover, I need to be able to do. But you can also set up a boot off a USB stick, off an external hard drive. I prefer this way because CDs come with ISOs online, they're so much easier to download. So external CD drive, you plug it in via USB, and that's it. Um, so it doesn't make it any safer at all. But also with your laptop, I could take the hard drive out and just plug it into my Windows. Again, my Windows, I'm the administrator. I can view all the data on it. Um, obviously, the what I was trying to demonstrate there is I don't even have to get a screwdriver out to do this. Um, so what that's done is shown I can get access to the data. If I plug in an external hard drive, I can copy all the data off onto that external hard drive and just browse it normally.
uh, I put it on my computer, I can read all the Word documents, the Excel files, I can look at the, all the pictures, everything like that. Now that was done within three minutes of me starting the hack. So that's after I've set the password to Coffee Clutch, I've logged out, right, and I rebooted. At that point, I was then going to go to hack the machine. Three minutes. So if you're, uh, if you're thinking that why would anybody access the data on my computer, it's the equivalent of you leaving your diary on a coffee table and walking away and having someone that you might not know sat there. Human nature, pure curiosity is, oh, I'm gonna, it's right in front of me, I'm gonna pick it up and have a, a nosy through it. So it's not a case of they're going to go into your data because they want to look at it because they think you've got important data for them to look at. It's three minutes of their life and they can get, and they can have a look at it. They're going to, you know, just pure basics of what images have you got stored? There's the immediate attraction for someone who's stolen a computer. What images are there on a computer that people have put on there from their phones, from uh, various other things? Uh, that pure curiosity. So uh, that's where people go down and just go and have a look, which is why with GDPR, if it's not encrypted and your laptop is lost, or stolen, it has to be reported as a breach because it's that easy to get into access the data. The second Can part. Can I ask you something, Tristan? Yep. Sorry to interrupt huh? you, but it's not just your laptop, is it? If your house is burgled or your office is burgled and your desktop PC is stolen, the situation is the same, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because um, we tend to think, oh, laptop, laptop, laptop. Yeah. But when I was talking to clients, several of them said they've had their offices burgled and their yeah. whole PC system's yeah. gone. And the other thing I was going to say was, I know we advocated at different points, and maybe you'll be kind enough to do a webinar on that, that people e-shred their data before they get rid of old yeah. PCs and things. But the same would apply, wouldn't it, if, if the drive was put in another computer, if you had a computer yeah. that died. So if, the person so, who got that computer off a rubbish dump or whatever could read the data, couldn't they? Yeah, potentially, if you've not properly cleanse the the equipment before you you take it away um if you do a factory reset of windows it gives you two options are you giving this computer to someone else or are you keeping it and if you say i'm keeping it it will factory reset everything fresh install format everything but it will take half an hour to do and the reason it does that is it's a very simple format as in it deletes the directory that shows where all the files are but all the data is there when you choose the option to say I'm giving it away to someone, what it does is it formats it fully with zeros. So all the data is wiped. And then that way um, it's not easily recoverable. Potentially, if you took it to sort of government agencies or top level, the, the people who sort of are wearing the lab coats and take one of these hard drives and unscrew uh, to get the platters out of it, then Yes, they might be able to get something unless you take it to a, a higher level of the, the formatting you can do. Um, America, sort of the NSA, say that they do what's called a seven pass, which means they write uh, seven lots uh, zeros to every little block on the hard drive and then ones to every little block on the hard drive. And they do that seven times over because it means that there's no magnetic charge left of the original data that could even remotely be recovered. There is a lot out there that generally say, and it, it's true, that if you do it with one pass of zeros and one pass of ones, you've written, pretty much written, overwritten the data. There would somebody have to be a lot of money and a lot of skill to try and recover anything from there. So if you do the, the, the Microsoft one, which is you are generally quite fine. If you're a bit more worried, it, I'd say talk to an IT person to have them go through and properly um, do a, um, a secure format of the hard drive or if you are chucking it away and you really want to be ultra, ultra cautious, remove the hard drive and don't let that go. Uh, there are firms out there that will completely shred hard drives, that will completely break it all up so nothing's recoverable on them. Uh, yeah. And that's what even- about Macs, Tristan? Because we talk about Windows 10. I'm not a Mac user, but I'm aware of the fact a significant number of our customers yeah. are. Um, is it as easy? I mean, Macs, I thought, encrypted themselves anyway. I'll get in a terrible mother with it all. I should have brought that one out in front of me. Yeah. That memory stick does exactly the same as that CD for Max, and that was six quid off eBay. That's my wow. recovery memory. That's my re when if a, because you don't get Mac software on a CD anymore. So let's say a hard drive fails on an Apple Mac, 
As an IT technician, I I have no ability to reinstall Mac, uh, the Mac OS on the computer for a user. So if they've got a brand new computer, they're going for a brand new SSD, anything like that, you can't freshly install it. So that is a recovery, and you can make that completely yourself off Apple. So if you've got a Mac yourself, you can make that memory stick yourself. Uh, it takes about half an hour. Well, for me, five quid was cheaper to buy it on eBay than make it myself. Um, so that's why I bought that. And that just will do a fresh install of the Mac OS. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's licensed to the machine and the user. So when the user type, when I, so when I set up a new user in there, it gets fully licensed to them and then it's uh, updates to the latest version. But that's all I need and I can access all the data on the Mac just exactly the same way because that's my Mac OS rather than the one which is yours, which is password protected. So what do you recommend we do? Because obviously we've all been thinking, well, perhaps not all of us, well, I've got a password when I log in yeah. or um, I've got a password on my software when I log in and that's the end of that then. Yeah. What do we need to do to well, make our data the... more secure? Uh, that's, yeah, so uh, as Alex has just put up there, if your PC is encrypted and fails, so you can't, ah, right, so I'll slightly answer your question there with that, Alex, as well. If you encrypt your computer, what you are doing is changing all the ones and zeros to a, a, a secret code. So it's, it's a completely secret code that the only way to decode it, to decrypt it, and I have to use it very carefully between the word of coding and encryption, but to decrypt it, you have a decryption password. So this is the password that's set to decrypt the, to decrypt the actual hard drive. Now, when you, if you've gone through it, uh, your, uh, the encryption yourself, you will have noticed that when Windows does it, it gives you what's called a recovery key, which is about a 32 to 60 odd character key that says print, save, keep in a safe place that or save it to your Microsoft account. That is your decryption password. With that, that's the mathematical numbers that can go in there that will allow all the calculations to happen to work out what your data actually is. So that's how the hard drive is encrypted. Now, Windows can encrypt and decrypt BitLocker because it is Microsoft's way on any device. So I can take, so if this hard drive was encrypted on one machine, I can plug it into my machine. And as long as I've got that recovery key, I can decrypt it. Okay. So, but if I don't have that recovery key and at 32 characters long, we're talking about for me to do a, a combination attack of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, one, 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 two, one, three, and so on. We're talking thousand well 32 characters uh so it's 32 um so it'd be 10 to the power of 32 um so yeah we're talking millions of years if not in higher than that uh quadrillions of years uh quintuplets of years um or quintuple oh, I forgot, I'm alert. there'll be a physicist or a mathematician somewhere and they'll go it will give us the exact answer at some point you know how life is they'll go it will be whatever it's but anyway not a not a quick hack not on the scale no. that you've so just demonstrated I, I couldn't i wouldn't be able to do that nobody else would be able to do that in a reasonable time frame it would be long 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 past you being dead. So at which point really that data would be so out of date, it wouldn't be much use to anybody. So uh, worse you, than waiting for the helplines then? <laughs> we, we probably, yeah, we probably find that the earth no longer exists at that point when they've worked it out because of how many you years. finally go, I've got into my data. Yeah, yes. so that is, that's the protection you've got now. So when I would Alex, have does, that, up, does that answer your question, Alex? About well, slightly got a slight slant on that. So mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do is link the two together. So with that, if I booted up off my version of Windows, it would see the hard drive, but I would still have to give it that encrypted password to be able to get into the data. Otherwise, it would just see a lot of random numbers and ones and zeros that makes no sense to it whatsoever. So yeah, don't lose your encryption key. Definitely don't lose it. So if your Windows fails, so as you've, as I said, if your PC fails, so you can't gain access, you can still recover your data as long as you have that encryption key. And now what a Microsoft doesn't let you do is save that file to the hard drive that you that encrypted, you've just encrypted because yeah. you've been locking your keys inside the safe. Um, 
now what you do is and the, so and i'll answer one other question before it arises in a moment but the what you do is you either print it out and store it in a safe store it with your microsoft account we again keep that very safe or uh with people i've done it for i've printed it to a pdf file and then i've stored that within their one of their cloud storage so that they've got that nice and safe so they've always got an ability that they could use their mobile phone to go in and get it to see what the file is but and it keeps it safe there it's kept in a, a several folders deep uh but it means that the data is safe on there. So if someone's stolen a laptop, they can't get access to any of the data to get access to that file. But if you have a problem like your computer fails or something like that, you've always got access to the file because it's stored in the cloud. Uh, and that's the way I tend to recommend it with a lot of clients, purely because they've always physically got the file and they've got the ability to get access to it wherever they are, whenever they need it, as long as they can get into their cloud storage, whether it's Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, or whatever. I've got mine as, um, you know, you can make secure notes in LastPass. Yeah. So I yeah. tend to stick like that there because I can That's get it. LastPass. Just yeah. about, anyway, and we, I find having one place to stick all that stuff is helpful because then I've got one password to remember for LastPass. Otherwise, yeah. I start to lose the will to live. Exactly. So um, now the one question might rise go, well, hang on, when I turn my computer on, it, it never asks me. For, I know I've encrypted it. I've done, all, done the encryption. I turn my computer on, it just boots straight up to Windows and asks me for my standard login. You've got two parts of the encryption. So um, you, you, if, you, if you encrypt on an older computer, so still Windows 10, but it's a computer which is probably around two, three years old, you will have to set up a password. Word where you turn on your PC, you'll get a blue screen up saying, can you enter your BitLocker password? That is not your recovery key. That is a password that unlocks the recovery key, which Windows then uses. So you still need to keep your recovery key safe. Uh, that password is um, that is just so you don't have to type in 32 characters yourself every single time you boot on your boot up your PC. Modern day PC. So within the last couple of years, they have what's called a security chip, which as long as your version of Windows, so the one that's installed on your computer, the security chip are both together. It will allow uh, it will allow access to that hard drive. But when I boot from the version of Windows that's on this CD, it is not your version of Windows. So this and that security chip, it will not unlock the hard drive. So I will still need the recovery key. It has to be the version of Windows that you have installed on your hard drive when you encrypt it. We're, as in, when I say version of Windows, I don't mean version 10, or I mean your specific installation of Windows and a security chip that will allow your computer just to automatically unlock it. But as, but for me to access the data on the hard drive, I'm having to use my my installation of Windows, which... So it's like your licensed copy, effectively, we're yeah, talking about, not version exactly. in terms of what yeah. digital So it is yeah. still protected, even though you don't have that blue screen, which says... Uh, enter your BitLocker password. So I would still then need to know your the recovery key to gain access to it. Now, this could read encrypted data as long as I have the recovery key, which is how I can do a backup. I can access data as I would need to, because if I'm there, someone, so if Alex says his computer's failed, he brings it to me, and I he's, we can't get into Windows, we can do that as long as he's got his recovery key. It's one of the reasons why I would highly recommend using things like BitLocker rather than TrueCrypt or VeraCrypt or various other ones because you would need a Windows CD with their encryption software installed on it, which means you've got to go through a lot of technical changes to do that. Whereas just having Windows, any Windows computer can understand the BitLocker encryption as long as you have that recovery key. So if you've encrypted your laptop by using um, your TrueCrypt, VeraCrypt or anything else, you need to make sure you've got a separate way of recovery because a standard install of Windows won't allow it, uh, won't be able to decode it or decrypt it. It doesn't understand it. Uh, so just from there, Barbara, if you have a new laptop with Windows 10, well, if it's a new laptop with Windows 10, you have to install uh, you have to turn on the encryption. Encryption is not on by default. And when you turn it all on, it will give you the option to be able to save your recovery key of where you want to save it. Um, so that's be the place. That's where you need to look at. You can always go back if you have lost it, but you can still access your PC. 
if you don't know where it is, if you go into the manage bit locker section in the settings, you'll be able to go and get your recovery key again and save it or print it or whatever you want to do. Uh, don't print it and put it with your laptop because if someone steals that, it's, you've given your key away with the safe. Um, so Just that's... to say something, because obviously yeah. I've had the benefit of being, this is my third webinar with you, and I think Barbara may be on her first. What Tristan covered with us earlier was um, Windows PCs don't arrive ready encrypted. If you don't turn it on, if you or someone else hasn't turned it on, it's not encrypted. Um, so if you haven't gone into BitLocker and set it off, and the earlier, I think the first webinar we did, and it's back in our customer group if you want it, or tag me if you can't find it, uh, Tristan covered how to do it. But we've also got something really great for you today, which is he's offering you a free health check. Mm -hmm. And I'll put the link up. Um, as a broadcast to the group, and um, I'll put it up later as a sticky message. Um, so if you're not at all sure if you're encrypted or not, I'm sure that's something that Tristan can answer. Yeah. And it really is a genuine offer of a free health check. Yeah, it's it's a a, you get the report, your strengths, your weaknesses, and what I'd advise for them to be fixed, uh, as in to how, what you'd need to do as but it's always the way of how you'd want to work. Uh, Sarah's note up there that she's gone, yes, you have to be on Windows 10 Professional. Most computers you buy from a high street uh, are Windows Home. They don't tend to be sold uh, with the Windows Professional. It doesn't mean a full install. It's an upgrade process. It's very simple that, to be done. Um, but the so that w the encryption stops me viewing the data. Now, the, the last part of what I did in that video, just to, to finish off with the, the video part, was uh, I re I applied a swapped two files. There's an accessibility feature when you log into Windows because if you haven't got a keyboard or you can't type and you're using screen eye recognition things like that, you are it the accessibility feature brings on things like you can use your onboard on screen keyboard or it will do the uh, text to speech so you can know where you can you're going if you're partially sighted or blind. So all the accessibility features and the program that runs it is a file called utilman.exe. That when I click on that button, that's the program that runs. The the hack bit of what was done, the other part's not really a hack, it's just booting to a different version of Windows. The hack bit that was done is I swapped the file on the installed version of Windows and from a, a file called cmd.exe, which is your command prompt. So the bit which is might be a bit techy, you see that black screen with all the text on there. Um the we uh we turn the text all on there and then um you can type it in and you get a lot more control over what you're doing. It's the old sort of DOS days um, before Windows was properly used as a, the default operating system. That command prompt, when it runs on that screen, has full system administrator access. So when I've done is I've swapped that program to run and I've renamed it utilman.exe. So when I click that button on the login screen, it's actually going to load up the date, the program cmd.exe which is it's been renamed to utilman.exe so what that does is it means it can load up the command prompt while i'm not actually logged into windows which normally you can't do again if it was encrypted i cannot get into the windows to swap those two files around so the encryption stops me messing with anything on that hard drive but because i could view the hard drive normally i can swap it um so i swap the files rebooted and then I click on the accessibility feature, it loads up the command prompt. And then the line that you saw me typed in, which was net user, my username, Tristan, and then I typed in the word password. Whatever word you type in after your name, so net user, net your username, the next word is setting a password. So I suddenly told it the password is password. And then I could log in with the password, password. I am then in as the user in front of their computer. So I have access to all their applications, all their data again. And what's most important is I have access to their Google Chrome, Edge in, uh, Internet Explorer, Edge, Mozilla Firefox, and all of their cached logins. In other words, I go to Facebook. If you went to Facebook this morning and you didn't type in your username and password, it's cached. So I can go straight there, load up, type in facebook.com, and I'm automatically logged in because it's a trusted computer. Not only that, if I'm 
if you save your passwords, which is a good, the feature's good in Google Chrome and in Edge and all the others, uh, it's a good feature to, with that saving your password. It's just like a password manager. Because I'm actually already in as you as a user, I can just say log in as you, it will give me your password into there and I can actually browse those passwords to read them. So because I'm logged in as you, uh, I'm not logged in with another account, I'm logged in as the actual user. So suddenly I have access to everything. And Interesting. That, can I interrupt you for a minute? Yeah. Because obviously I'm thinking at this from the point of view of somebody who's not very techy. Eh? And I know we had this in, in earlier webinars, but Windows 10 Pro yeah. gives you BitLocker and the yeah. home software doesn't. Now, no. one of the things I want to say from a GDPR point of view is this. If you are using laptops and um, PCs for work, in other words, you're self-employed a yeah. freelancer, and you are using my data on it, you have an obligation to properly secure that data. Yeah. And as Tristan says, if that machine is lost and it's not encrypted, you're going to have to report that as the data loss. Right. Yeah. If it is encrypted, we think you can get away with not because no one can read it unless you've been daft enough to put your encryption record on the machine somewhere as well so i want to raise a point which is there are lots of people computer designers vas it people using home versions of windows because it's cheaper but if you are charging me for a service and you are therefore a professional person i'm not very happy with that no. now when we got when we started this work on gdpr which for some of us was 18 months ago by the way not just in may we were anticipating that your customers would start at some point doing due diligence on you and going, what measures are you taking to secure your data? I just want you to know that we've got the first few tiny clients coming into us with, I've been sent this questionnaire, what the hell does it mean? One of the questions when you decode the psycho bubble, and it took a while, you know what these things are like, is are you encrypting the data? They also ask you at what level, which is a bit more complicated, but you will find if you're selling services that involve handling data for your clients, the more switched on ones are going to eventually make this the condition of doing business with you. So this is not just about GDPR compliance. You might want to protect your own records, by the way, anyway. I don't want my credit card details being nicked, even if I've got no legal obligation not to have that done. But be aware of the fact as a B2B service provider, it's already happening between the mega corporations and the mid-range providers. Yeah. And the mid-range providers are going out to ask their small suppliers, well, that's an interesting point. What are you doing? And those small ones are going to come to the freelancers at some point. Yeah. And you need to be able to go, tick, this is my standard practice. This is where I'm at. So Tristan's offer of your IT health check get in there before he gets killed in a rush because a lot of people are not ahead of the curve and it's going to go mad when everyone's contracts renew and they go, what's your security level on your laptop or your PC? And the answer is, pass, never thought about yeah. it. There's, there's not good. There's two things I would add into that. Um, I don't think it's a case of people buying Windows Home because it's, a, it's cheaper than Windows Pro. Uh, in all honesty, where, you, where a, a typical person will buy a computer from, you don't tend to see the option of pro available because if you're going to as a so if uh, you're a small business you you're where do i buy a computer from okay uh, i might look at dell i might look at uh, amazon i might look at eBuyer, i might look at pc world any of those sorts of places you'll go in and then well windows is windows so you'd buy it and the majority of the pcs that will be sold to you will be stating windows home mm -hmm. and windows pro isn't always something that's fully identifiable as something to, to buy easily. So with Dell, yes, if you go to their business section and you buy it from there, they'll tend to typically have Windows Professional on there. With eBuyer, it's open to the two. I don't think I've seen Pro properly in any sort of the PC World ones because they're designed for home uh, home users. Um, it is an upgrade process. It, I would, I if my personal recommendation, if you're buying a computer, is it's not so much about the operating system that's on it, as in whether it's home or professional, get the best hardware. The software can be upgraded and it's not a huge cost to upgrade it from home to professional. Just make sure that ultimately when you're finished, you're using professional. Um, 
the there is quite a hike increase on some of them when you're buying them as a new PC to include Pro uh, because it's the business market. But as you say, it's, it is absolutely a it's a, if you're doing a business, you're looking at what you're providing to your clients um, as the service you're providing and what service you put to them. Uh, the best way I from my networking that he ever got it, it sort of explained to me from an advertising uh, sort of point was if I if there, I said to you, you've got to pick an IT person to use and there's one person stood in front of you said they do home and business and another one said they do business only, which one would you pick to look at your business IT? And most people will pick the business only because they think the home and business will bring home technology or home security into the business and do it on the cheap rather than do what's needed and that what's needed doesn't mean it's expensive it just means it's looking from a business point of view uh, I love that. What's needed doesn't mean it's expensive because i think there is a feeling in the in the micro business market the solo planner market you know you go to someone to talk about tech and before you know it there's significant zeros and i'm not talking zero ones on your hard drive but um there was a lot of crisis, you know, the cyber security people going to solopreneurs going for £5,000, I'll tell you if your system's secure enough. And it's like, for £5,000, I'll go out of business, mate. You know, there's got to be yeah. another option, hasn't there? There's been a yeah. lot of um, people maybe geared at mega corporations scaring the life out of so yeah, There's a lot of overzealous and over the top sort of from what someone actually needs uh, as, a, as a typical business. Obviously, depending on the level of data you have and the size of your business and how much you might be targeted for attack, that does depend that, yeah, if you are a business saver size of uh, a company that's got thousands of employees, well, yes, you're going to need a significant network infrastructure there. But if you're a smaller business with five employees or just on your own, the security can still be as strong, but you don't need the same level of infrastructure. Uh, so there's lots of things that can be done. Uh, I mean, I'm just looking through a few of the questions there. I mean, the, uh, yeah, so with, because Windows 10 professional, I say, is one that includes BitLocker, but someone's asked about it, whether it's Windows or, off, or Microsoft 365. Windows is your operating system. The Office 365 is just your Word Excel. That's nothing to do with Windows. So everything here, what we're talking about, the encryption, is to do with Windows itself. Uh, so um, iPads it is. I've got a question about what about iPads? iPad, Apple is beautiful. Um, I, I, I love PCs and Macs. Both I'm happy to use on my desk. I've got both. Uh, when it comes to phones and tablets, and there's another webinar, I think you've put that one in there in the yeah. group as well, about encrypting mobiles. Apple devices are fantastic because what they do is as soon as you put a PIN code in, it's automatically encrypted. Well, actually, it's automatically encrypted. It's just if you don't have a PIN code, you don't need anything to get in. So your, your PIN secures it. But all the data on an iPhone and an iPad is encrypted by default. So just get a, a PIN on there. That means people, you, anybody who steals your phone has to type in a pin. Um, Android, it's all down to the device itself. What you're looking for is device encryption in the settings, and it's usually on the setting page about your screen lock. You're looking for a little swipe on there which says device encryption, uh, and you want that on to encrypt the entire device. Not all of them have it. Some of them lock it down. It should by default. Android, as a default operating system made by Google, has built-in encryption. It just needs turning on. Some phone manufacturers turn it on by default. Some phone manufacturers have it left off and allow you to turn it on. Some phone manufacturers deny you access, and then for a normal user, you'll get it. And if you buy their business version of the phone, you'll get the ability to use their encryption software. Um, which we, we had a bit of a discussion about on there. So Android, before you buy the phone, check it out in the shop, check that you can see an option to turn on the encryption and make sure that you have full confirmation that the entire device is encrypted because the ones that make secure folders, you can't put your contacts inside your secure folder, which means uh, your contact list which has got names, phone numbers, addresses, email addresses, dates of birth, and whatever else you store is a lot of personal data. And unless the device is encrypted, it won't include that. And it's a nightmare, isn't it? Because new phones come out every day. And even this, 
say manufacturers phones are different whether they do that or not um yeah. I'm, i've been slightly going mad with samsung with like me it was I, know, I, that, I don't know if Samsung has changed since my webinar with you last time, but Samsung had stated to me last time, so at that particular date, uh, that there you had to, they they disabled the the encryption wasn't available on the normal consumer phone of the the S9 I think it was, and but the business version of the S9 had the knock security which allowed device encryption. Uh, and you could only get the business one if you went through a particular route, as in a business customer buying from a business provider. Uh, if you bought it from Carphone Warehouse or anywhere else, typically it wasn't coming with the Knox security. Uh, and that was what they, that was how it was at the time. Have they changed it since? I don't know. Um, no, my advice to people is, and Apple phones, I just, you don't have to think, you know it's encrypted. Um, and I prefer to keep things simple in life. So it's absolutely brilliant. Well, we're coming to the end of our um, hour, which has been brilliant, because when we talked about this, we've already got 20 minutes of tech, but yeah. there we are. That is never the case, is it? Thank you so much for your time, Tristan. You're a member of all the Coffee Clatch groups. So if you want to tag um, Tristan, if you're a customer in the Coffee Clutch customer group or any of the GDPR groups with a specific question following on from this, I'm sure he will answer you. Don't go mad if it's not like in the next 10 minutes because, yeah. you know, we, we do take time to work through all the questions. And Tristan, I can't thank you enough because you're, you're the only well. person who ever talks to me about tech that doesn't make me want to just pass out cold, you know. Um, I try my best. <laughs> well, you do really well. And um, I really appreciate the support you're giving to our groups. You have got the uh, link in the chat room. Yep. for how to contact Tristan and claim your free health check. It's on that page, on... there's a, a Calendly link so you can see my availability and a book an appointment straight in. It's, it's a half an hour process and at the end of it, you'll have a report which will tell you where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are and what I'd advise to fix those weaknesses. Absolutely. So if you're seeing this as a recording and not a replica, replica replay, that will be at www.tlmartin dot limited that's ltd dot uk forward slash services forward slash it hyphen health hyphen check forward yeah. slash well i have to get you a short link tristan if that's, you if you went to the martin dot ltd dot uk and you follow the menus you'll be able to see that there's services and it health check there to follow it uh the link is just so you could go direct to their page uh, for people who did indulge in sort of it before, uh, the just to give us a, a point, I did have a few sort of, as I got quite a few last year from with the health checks from a, a lot of the coffee clutch, it did take me a bit of time to get back to people. But luckily this year I now have my own VA who's doing my write-ups for me. So that will be a lot quicker for everybody. Everybody <laughs> gains. You pay a VA. The VAs get better service. This is how business is done, isn't it? And you're getting some rave reviews in the chat room by the way, from people who've already had your health check service, which is lovely. And um, the thing people report back very positively on in the groups is they actually understand what you've told them. Because uh, um, quite often tech reports are inscrutable. Yeah. It's, okay, thank you very much for telling me this. What language is it in? But yeah. people love it, that they understand what they need to do and they understand the options they've got, which is fabulous. So, um and Jenny's saying, should her remote hard drive for storing her data be plugged in for a health check? Uh, yeah, if you're using a if you use an external hard drive for your data on there, I I would have your computer with the health check set up as you would normally be using it, because. Uh, what I would end up doing is asking you what you're doing, what your goal is with that, because the couple of things that pop into my mind is why you're using a remote hard drive with that. What again is your backup that you're doing? Because hard drives can fail, um, and also a couple of suggestions that might improve the way you work that you might not have come across, um, and it's just things that might actually help you out with that. So I would always have your PC set up the way you'd normally use it. Uh, when I go through it, because that allows me to tell you where your strengths and weaknesses are. Plus, there's a remote hard drive, if it's external, is it encrypted or not? Because the BitLocker encrypts your internal hard drive perfectly fine. It can encrypt any external ones as well, but you need to tell it. So you'd have to do two lots of encryption, one for the hard drive and one for the external. So, um, uh, and that's the thing that I go through with there. So, and let you know. Brilliant. You know, there is no end to the things I don't know about basic tech. 
it's really quite scary because we use all this stuff don't we and when you start talking i realize apart from turning on my pc and logging in that's it really you know but i'm really glad you're helping us thank you so um, much Tristan. And if you want to pick this up with tristan tag him in one of the coffee clutch groups feel free to um, drop me a message tag me in a post anything you like to get in touch with me absolutely there will be or should be some post webinar emails going out so if you're not watching this live and you're not a coffee clutch customer we will be sending you other ways to contact tristan this is part of our ongoing support for all coffee catch customers on gdpr and it's just like listen and learn i'm amazed tristan thank you so much speak you're very to you soon. it's always a pleasure bye bye